YouTube. Coins detected in pocket. It's your boys, Detroit Love, P Dubs RK Love, Michael B the Game Genie, and Rostalgia with another episode of the Super Game Room Dudes. Friday night. Just got live. Uh, oh, sorry, guys. Um, I wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. <laughs> What's oh, going man. on, gentlemen? How y'all doing I, today? I saw something funny here. I saw first show since the eclipse, the post apocalypse episode. There you go. That's pretty funny. Thanks so much for putting that in the live chat. All right, guys, it's Friday. Uh, thanks, as always, for tuning in to the Super Game Room Dudes. We greatly appreciate your support. Do us a favor. Give us a thumbs up. And also, welcome to the live chat and tonight's broadcast. I'm your host, P-Dubs. With me, as always, Rostalgia, Michael B. the Game Genie, and Detroit Love. How are you, gentlemen? I feel like I'm on an episode of Craig Ferguson. Are we doing awkward pause? Or are we doing uh, snake cup? What are we doing? I'm froze, so. <laughs> <laughs> man, how you doing, P-Dose, man? It's an awesome week, man. I'm glad it's Friday night to hang out with you fellas. Got a long weekend. Took off tax day Monday. So um, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it all, baby. Let's do it. Good stuff, Carl. Greatly appreciate it. Rostalgia, how was your week? It's pretty good. All right. Am I having internet problems here? Is everybody frozen? There's got to be something going on here. Everybody's chill. Everybody's chill tonight. Oh, I'm working. Michael B., how was your week? It's a hard week, man. Long, hard week. Um, a lot of shitty stuff happened, and I'm very excited to. Spend my Friday night with you guys and, of course, all the awesome people in the chat. Good stuff, good stuff. All right, so we got a number of topics tonight, guys. We got the uh, Arcade 1-Up Golden Tea Deluxe, I guess, has officially been officially, it's officially, officially official. At Games Pinball 4K, they did a bunch of weird brain teasers. Uh, we got some tournaments coming out. Mike put down what is Crossfire. We'll find out what that's all about. That's an interesting little item. I kind of took a peek at that because I, I didn't even hear about it until Mike sent it to me. And uh, that oh, I was going to make a video on it all by myself, but I was like, no, I'll save it for the boys. It'll be fun to do for a joint show. Yeah. And uh, what else we got going on here? Um, what else we got going on? I, I swear we had more. Oh, man, there's so much stuff going on. Uh, Stern Pinball release. They're doing a new re-release. I mean, look Stern, come up with something new already, goddammit. Like, jeez, all these re-releases. But uh, Stern's doing a new re-release. They just released some code from Venom, and there's a really cool Venom video about to hit the internet. Like, if you're a big fan of pinball, and especially Venom pinball, one of the Super Game Room dudes is about to drop probably the best Venom, Venom video you've ever seen. I've seen snippets of it. All kidding aside, Nostalgia went out and actually got a production team to come in and film this, and this looks like it's going to be a pretty epic video. I mean, like, what other YouTuber would go out and, like, pay to have a production company come in and film yeah. their videos? <laughs> You're blowing it up a little too big. <laughs> oh, no, it, like, it is fucking epic. Like, I saw some of the shots. It's really good. They did. They did a good job. I didn't bring in like a whole production team, just a videographer to help me with the filming. And Mason? No, I didn't fly. <laughs> I did not fly Mason out. Just working with a local team. Uh, it's just it, with a machine that big, it's pretty challenging to like get really good shots and play and see what the shots look like. And so I just had someone else come in, and they came in. They did a good job. They got some lighting set up, and I mean so, the video is still gonna suck. I mean I'm the one who narrates the video and it's oh yeah but you script, pay so someone to edit it bad. so i mean that should save it yeah a little bit just a little so bit. what you're saying is you're not used to working with big equipment yeah you're a no, little uncomfortable I, use, I use the smallest equipment around and i've gotten pretty used to that over the years so yeah i'm okay with that good stuff uh, did we talk about at games uh flipping fun tournaments uh star trek hitting 
Golden Tee officially official. Uh, oh, other than that, Nintendo just dropped some Super Nintendo games. Super Air Type's a good time. The rest of it is pretty piss poor. And Super Air Type, even though it was a good time, was still a discount bin game at one point. So we'll uh, we'll keep doing that. And there was a big stuff. I didn't even leave this in our chat, but apparently uh, there was some kind of cinema con this past weekend, and a bunch of trailers dropped for like uh, the GI Joe Transformers crossover movie they're making. Plus, uh, they showed the first clips from uh, Captain America: Brave New World. So, a lot of cool stuff going on in the world of I'm glad, nerd. I'm, I'm glad you didn't bring up Moana Two trailer dropped. I'm I, glad you I, didn't bring that up. There's no a idea. Moana Two. <laughs> yeah, is that real? The, tra- the trailer dropped at CinemaCon by The Rock. Oh, no man. way. Um, also, we got uh, man, we got a lot going on. So we'll try and fit as much into the show as we can. As always, this show is four dudes reading and reacting to the latest headlines in arcade and gaming news. We'll say hi to the live chat here in just a minute. But before we do, while people are still coming in, uh, one of our very own super game room dudes has achieved <laughs> a new level of stardom. We're talking. <laughs> we're talking. It used to be YouTube superstar. Now it's YouTube megastar. Michael B. the Game Genie made it on the radio. And Mike, I know growing up, you know, a lot of girls in school told you you have a face for radio. But Uh, what was it like to see that become reality? Oh, it was pretty cool. It was something, uh, of course, I've always wanted to do, like do a radio interview and stuff like that. So you got to go into the studio and talk a little bit about... uh, Retro games. The there was a TV portion as well, which I didn't know because apparently the radio show, radio show is also hosted on the morning show. So they told me to bring in some toys, and I was like, for the radio. But I brought in some uh, new wave toys, replicates. Brought in your buddy Qbert, and I brought in my Dragon Slayer. Showed that off a little bit, and uh, yeah, just talked about my experience on YouTube, and it was fun. It was really cool. How about a, give a shout give out a little clip? Chat, are they going to let you share some of the? The, the radio clip online or no yeah yeah i shared it in our group chat but i can try to share it i did try to share, share it on facebook but because of the yeah. new rules with facebook you where it's coming it from a news censored. site it just censored it out so i can't really share it that way i'm, I'm gonna try to figure out some way to share it out to everybody mm-hmm. yeah big yeah, shout cool. out to michael b in That's the live awesome. chat ladies and gentlemen michael b has achieved the impossible <laughs> It's a very small province. They're excited about small things here. <laughs> During that radio interview, did you talk about arcade one up or any of the, uh, or was it mostly about like action figures or what you or your Nintendo days? What did you talk about? Ah, uh, just talked about everything. Like the guy, uh, you know, guy had never really seen my channel, but uh, what happened was the um, woman who's the producer. Her husband is like a big fan. Uh, he was the one who uh, introduced them to the idea. So he was like asking me about my collection and stuff. And I explained like all the stuff I collected. Um, talked about like how I collected the arcades. How I had like 30 at one point. But I moved on and uh, I'm down to, you know, like uh, 14, 15 now. So yeah, we talked about that. I talked about how uh, Arcade went up made these products, and you could buy an arcade and have it in your home for three hundred bucks. Now it's like seven fifty here in Canada. So, yeah, yeah, pricing is crazy these days. We got a five dollars super chat from Kevin Detroit Love. You want to handle this for us? I'm not going to touch that with a fifty foot pole. Oh, oh, can I see it? Uh, well, uh, the sec the second half we we could probably ignore, but. Uh, B Kong ended one of his shows last night. What is your favorite B Kong memory? Um, I didn't even know B Kong had a weekly show. <laughs> <laughs> Who's B Kong? <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. Uh, I I'm gonna have B on my show Monday night because we're gonna talk about toys and shit. So you're not gonna have uh, me on your show? What the hell's that about? I asked you to be on my show several times, and you're like, no, I have eclipse dates and stuff like that. No, what I said is you need to grow your channel. So that way I don't have to carry you, too. Uh, unfortunately, I'm, I will answer the second half of the question about Nicole, uh, Nicole Brown Simpson. No, you probably because, shouldn't. Oh, no, I positively can. Unfortunately, with the death of OJ, I guess his search will never ever really end to find the real killer. <laughs> uh, we have a $2 super chat, super chat from Stringer Films. Uh, so, Michael B., 
for the radio interview, was it shirt on or shirt off? Well, I was on camera, so obviously they, I tried to take my shirt off, and they were like, God, no. Uh, f- fun story, though. Uh, it, the guy before me, I went long, so they rushed me into the studio. I didn't even have time to take my jacket off. I was sitting there with like my windbreaker on and everything. Good stuff, good stuff. Um yeah, uh, Kevin. It's just that—that's not the kind of stuff I want to talk about on this. This is a gaming podcast. We can—we don't want to talk about that stuff. No offense, brother, but we appreciate the super chat. Uh, let's see here. All right, let's say hi to who's here in the live chat. If you want your shout outs, it's time to get this show started proper. We're done killing time, waiting for everyone to join the show. You, you just really quickly, Jasmine Labear has got a super chat. You should bring up there because it's about you, buddy. Uh, yo, P-Dubs, just bought Hell Comes to Frogtown. God, I hope this is good. Sir, you are going to be sorely disappointed because it's so bad, it's good. And the fact that it's so bad is what makes it great. Hopefully you appreciate really cheesy, really bad horror movies for the 80s and hopefully with really bad special effects, low-budget horror films. But I love it. Rowdy Roddy Piper, great movie. I love it. It's one of my favorite movies. That and They Live, of course. So oh, They Live is so good. I think Piper did a couple other movies, too, but uh, I, I never really... The only two I can think of off the top of my head are those two. You know what I mean? Yeah. Terry Funk was in um, Over the Top. Terry Funk. Was he the guy who was drinking the antifreeze? Uh, no. Uh, no, he wasn't in Over... Was it Over the Top? Yeah, no, he was one of the security guards for, like, the grandpa... Oh, I gotcha. Yeah. I gotcha. I gotcha. All right, let's say hi to who's here in the live chat. We got MG, Satheus, Brian G, Jasmere, Brobotron, 2084, Jason Little Alien moderating the hell out of this show tonight, Terry B, JR, once his name said, we said your name, JT is here, Kevin Clausen, Shartio, Shartio, could have said that name wrong. Uh, we got Calvin Wong is here. We got Pitbull in the house. James hates everything. Goofy Foot. Carl O. Deadly McMahon. Wow, a lot of our favorites are here tonight. JR is here. Uh, who else is here? Um, I'm going too fast here. Retro Lab Rat is here as well. Frankie D. JJ. We got a lot of J's here tonight. <laughs> Galaga Guy 88 making awesome YouTube shorts on his channel. Tony C is he is here. Hermano's here. Apox Iceman. Iceman's here. Watch out. Mike doesn't like anyone with ice powers. Frank D is here. John J. Jim the Passers. Jim the Pacers fan. Kevin Clausen. Hazo <coughs> is here as well. The Fist of Love. And don't forget Meatball Saucy. Thumper Squid. Biggie Fries. What's going on, guys? Welcome to the show. Let's get the chat off the screen here. So, uh, all right. <clears throat> Super chat from uh, El Capitan, $1.99. What do you guys rate this past WrestleMania? I know that they like, they've been saying it's the biggest and best WrestleMania of all time because that's what they're supposed to do. Every year they tell you, it's been the biggest and best WrestleMania of all time. Numbers-wise, financially, statistically, biggest WrestleMania of all time. Is it the best WrestleMania of all time? I don't think so. Although it was wonderful to see the end of the Bloodline storyline and, and the, the Cody finishing his story, although that was great and powerful and emotional, I got to tell you, man, the back-to-back WrestleManias where you had Undertaker and Shawn Michaels those two matches are probably two of the greatest wrestling matches of all time. So much emotion and power behind those matches that, you know, I, I would rather watch replays of those matches than Hogan Rock or some of the other, or Rock Cena, you know, like the Undertaker, Austin matches will pull your heart out of your chest. They're so damn good. So was it the greatest WrestleMania of all time? No, I think there have been better shows with better lineups of superstars but it was it was a pretty damn good show mike wouldn't you agree it was a pretty damn entertaining show yeah it was it was an awesome wrestlemania i've been um a pretty absent wwe fan for the last i don't know like six years or so like i got really frustrated with the product uh became a pretty big aew fan just because i wanted an alternative something else to watch 
that didn't make me feel like an idiot. And WWE used to make me feel like an idiot for watching. Uh, made me really um, d depressed, like almost. So this past WrestleMania was really good. It made me, um, for the first time in a long time, really love pro wrestling again. And really feel good about it. So uh, amazing job. Um, you know, back in the fold, excited to see what WWE does going forward. They won me back with this WrestleMania. Yeah, it was very entertaining. Very, enterta very entertaining. Great way for our male soap opera to uh, to kind of take off here. All right, let's dive into some gaming news. Uh, first up on the docket, guys, let's talk a little bit about a company. You may have heard of them. They're, they're kind of small. Like, they don't release products very often. It's usually like a once in a blue moon thing you'll hear from them. But when you do, according to some people, it's always a banger. Let's talk about this company. Yeah, I don't know if you guys caught it, but Arcade One Up is just coming into the marketplace in 2024 and they are releasing the titles you know and love the titles that you've been going in their facebook groups and saying we want more of these titles the titles you've been going in their reddit groups and screaming in your reddit threads we want to see that game brought back the titles that they've been going commenting on youtube videos why are you guys talking about predictions all we want is more golden tea well, you're going to get it, baby. Golden Tee's official. Mike, what's going on there? How, what is happening? <clears throat> so, yeah, uh, the worst kept secret, and by no means were they trying to keep it, Golden Tee was officially announced this past week by Arcade 1UP. I believe it was Wednesday they officially announced it. Was it Wednesday or was it Thursday? I can't remember. Yesterday. So Thursday, Arcade 1UP, Best Buy put it up first, then Arcade 1UP sent out a notice over their app. And also email notice to everybody that Golden Tea was now available for pre-order. I think the most exciting thing about all this is uh, when the Wayfair leak came out, there was some confusion about price. Because originally they put it up for like $770 on the Wayfair site. Then it went down to $599. So it was a pleasant surprise to see it at a much more reasonable price of $499. Now $399 is still where I'd like to see the price point be, but $4.99 is certainly better than $5.99. And in line with the rest of the Deluxe cabs that came out last year, like uh, Class of 81, Pac-Man Deluxe, and MK2 Deluxe. So people that missed out on this cab, or even people that uh, you know are just looking for Golden Tee or to upgrade, or maybe even downgrade from the XL, and it's a great opportunity to get in. There is a little bit of confusion still. Uh, P-Dubs, me and you talked about this. I talked about it in my video I did as well. Because if you go to every single site, including Arcade 1UP, under the games list, it does list that Shuffle Shot will be included. However, in the email blitz that they sent out, the marketing material, Shuffle Shot is nowhere to be found. And they have the original, original Golden Tee listed as one of the games. So... I'm pretty sure every single website and uh, every single listing is accurate and not the mailer they sent out. So hopefully Shuffle Shot is included for those people who have pre-ordered. And real quick to answer Minnie's question here, will it have Wi-Fi? Yes, this will have online leaderboards <clears throat> and it'll probably sync up with the leaderboards that are on the Golden TXL machine. So when it comes to playing World Class Bowling, Shuffle Shot and... I, um, and a lot of the other uh, golf games, um, you know, they had all kinds of things like most eagles, lowest score. They had a, but they actually had some interesting leaderboard uh, brackets uh, that you'll be able to compete with everybody else on uh, for the leaderboards. Carl, how do you feel, man, about Golden Tee? We've been asking for this, and we haven't asked for any new titles or new games. This is all we wanted. <clears throat> we want we want regurgitated, improved previous games. That's what we like from Arcade One Up, and nothing wrong with that. Uh, again, uh, these games are made for the masses, not for just us guys. So it's it's they want to get at least one of these cabinets into every household. That's their goal. Why mm -hmm. wouldn't it be right? And so uh, this obviously is a popular game that should sell uh, no matter where they put it. Uh, I, I've never bought one from a actual Best Buy store. I've never seen one in a store, but I've bought plenty from 
uh, their online store uh, because they have nice uh, financing things mm -hmm. where you don't have to pay any interest over a year and that type of thing. So I like I like Best Buy. I bought a few from there. Um, but have you guys actually seen any of these cabinets from RK One Up in a Best Buy store in your areas? Mm -hmm. Do you mean you? Do you mean Golden Tea or the Deluxe Cabs? Yeah, any cabinet. I've never seen any cabinet uh, from RK One <clears throat> in a yes. Best Buy. Physical I've store. seen a bunch of them. I, I've I seen um, like they had uh, Pac Man up at ours last year. The Pac Mania one, um, uh, like actually a display. Toys R Us here in Canada uh, actually had a big display for a while. And, um, you know, our version of Nebraska Furniture Merit, the brick always has a bunch of cabinets on display. Okay, nice. You guys still have Toys R Us there? Mm -hmm. Yes, we do, sir. We sure oh, do. That's nice. That's awesome. That's and going. you can oh, check out what's available at the local Toys R Us if you tune into my new weekly episodic show, Store Surfing, starring Michael B. and Scarlet B. Every Saturday. Well, mostly every Saturday. It might be Sunday this week. We'll see. <laughs> Well done. Rostalgia, how are you feeling about Golden Tea coming back out for the nine for the third time? Third time I think Arcade One Up has done Golden Tea now. Well, I, I certainly prefer this over a Pac-Man release. Um, but uh, if they were going to re-release the title, I think Golden Tea is a good one. Um, I mean, the machine mm -hmm. looks fairly good. The games have played fairly well. And uh, it's, it's a title I think that a lot of people will continue to have interest in whether it's existing user base or potentially a new market. I think that it's a, uh, it's a product that'll speak to a lot of people. So I don't really have a problem with it. I don't, I don't really have any anticipation that arcade one up is going to be releasing anything that's going to woo or wow me for the next several years, to be honest. I'm kind of at the, the point where I'm just expecting the same old, same old from them. And <clears throat> I think that's what the, what the new status quo is going to be million dollar question what could they do to woo you what would make you randy baby what could they do to excite you literally anything over 3.75 inches i think <laughs> no but seriously like is there um, something they could do that you'd be like holy shit like i'm a fan yeah i mean i would like to see a house of the dead cabinet um i would like to see a crazy taxi cabinet or a cruising i don't even really care which version of cruising just any cruising title um, I think those are the ones that I would be crazy after. I would like to see a Tekken cabinet. I think that'd be pretty cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I just just something new and popular. I think something new and popular, and definitely like '90s era and newer. I think is kind of where where I'd be interested. But I'm also a lot longer younger than you guys, so I'm. I mean, I'm playing into the my my own quote unquote nostalgia. So when I see something like this, this is a little bit before my time. It's not it's not really something that I really saw. And we didn't have our kids where I grew up very much. So these we would have seen in like bars, but I was too young to go to bars at the when, time and stuff like that. So No one, Golden Tea is not really, <laughs> that's what it is. Golden Tea is a bear game, man. Like that, That's every, what I mean. It's, yeah, it's not it's like a total bear game. Yeah. By the time I was going to the bars, there was no arcades in sight. That's what I mean. Mm. Like it's not something I would have ever Oh really yeah, that's right. Frequented. Shit. Yeah, like when I was in my 20s and stuff like that, like, yeah, it was impossible not to go to like a bar or a pool hall and not see a Golden yeah. Tea, Buck Hunter. Yeah. Yeah, when I when I got to the point, like even some pool halls where they let you in at like fifteen, sixteen, mm -hmm. if they had a machine, it was like usually broken. It didn't work. It wasn't. It was plugged in, but the screen was off. Like we, we never really got a chance to play something like this. So I don't I don't really have a fond spot for it. It's a fun game, but just not it's not my jam. Yeah, that that's weird that you got so into arcades because like that was really before your time period. I got into. Um, what got me into arcades actually was uh, the Super Nintendo, believe it or not. So um, in my childhood, I got in on the tail end of the Super Nintendo right before the N64 came in. And a lot of the games were ports of arcade titles. And I didn't learn that until later on. So one of my favorite games was Turtles in Time for the Super Nintendo. And I absolutely loved that. And it wasn't until like four or five years after that game had been released that I learned that it was even an arcade title in the first place. And at that point I was really into like emulation and I was using MAME. Um, and then I whoa, started whoa, whoa, to play whoa. You're, you're, you're really into emulation? No. Why what have we never about? talked about this Emulate. Emulation is literally piracy, Mike. I do not 
I do not support that in any way, shape, or form. Um, but uh, no, I, I got I was into emulation kind of growing up. I did a lot of the like Super Nintendo emulation and Game Boy emulation and, and MAME emulation and arcade stuff on my PC. And that's when I really started to get into the arcade games. So, you know what my uh, first thoughts were when I played finally played Turtles in Time, the arcade game, after being a huge fan of it on the Super Nintendo. What's it up? was uh, man, the Super Nintendo game so much better than this shit. No, it wasn't. Oh yes, it is. The Super Nintendo game is miles better than the arcade. You're talking specifically Turtles, Turtles in Time. Okay, then I I would agree with that. Yeah. It's just like it's just like the Aladdin for Super Nintendo is just so much better than the Genesis Aladdin. I've changed my mind on that. I agree with you. And I accept your apology. All right, so but taking yeah. a peek here, guys, for ambiance. We've been rolling some footage in the background. This is footage of the arcade one up Golden T XL that I took on my channel uh, before mine crapped and you know crapped the bed on it. Uh, what's interesting about this is this Golden T Deluxe, it's the same cabinet, it's the same artwork, it's the same everything except it's got a 17-inch screen and also it's going to be about 5 inches shorter and a couple inches more narrow. So if you kind of want to get an idea, if you're new and you're like, well, what's it going to be like? This is pretty much what it's going to be like. It's just going to be a little bit smaller. And the screen is going to be considerably better. Uh, smaller but better. Oh, yeah, the BOE 17-inch monitor. Yeah. Uh, Carl, you want to handle this? Uh, yes, Super Chat from Kevin Clausen. Uh, Michael, he said he highly recommends your, so uh, your store surfing idea. I think it would be a great show. Ezekiel, the Chicago Retro Ranger, says, uh, I would like to thank the most handsome man in this panel, Ristalgia, for an awesome review of his Power Rangers game. He would like to find a way to include the Super Game Reviews into the game. That would be actually super cool to include us yeah. in that game. Yeah, I don't know thanks, if you guys for, that. thanks for the comment and the insult at the same time, Ezekiel. We greatly appreciate your support. Insult? What are you talking about? He's clearly right, especially about well, the first Well, then again, he comment. didn't say we're not handsome. He said we're just the... less handsome than you. Fair. That's true. That, that is, is true. It is true. What are, what are we supposed to do about that? we got to live in a world of reality. <laughs> oh, shut up, Ristalja. <laughs> All right, so here's a great, great question from uh, Dr. Freeman. How do you know the trackball gonna, ain't going to suck? So this trackball was a little more, I guess the term is grindy. Is that a good term? Like Garbage like... would be another one. <laughs> yeah, the uh, Golden TXL trackballs a uh, friggin' nightmare, man. And I've heard compared people say, to the original. Oh, compared yeah, compared to the original. Yeah, what a what an absolute piece of crap. Like I, I hate that trackball. Um, other people have said they've got a great experience. I, I'm mad about. I've tried four different Golden TXLs. Every single one had the same issues I have with my trackball. So I don't know, man. Other people are saying that not everyone is, but like I find that so frustrating. The first one just worked. It was great. This one sucks. So hopefully yeah. whatever they do on the deluxe, it's not the same trackball. They fix whatever issues there. Yeah. And what, one game that I do like that's included on this machine is the world-class bowling. Because unlike Simpsons bowling, where you play it twice and you'll score 300 every single game moving forward. World-class bowling, I played it, shit, well over 100 times on this cabinet before my cabinet crapped the bet on me. And I never once got a perfect game on it. This is actually a challenging bowling game. And, you know, it's fun. And you'll never get the same score twice. So I actually like this bowling game. So I always thought this was a nice addition uh, to the lineup on this machine. Yeah, I would like to have a bowling for sure in, in the arcade. Yeah. And you should get the deluxe, Carl. Yeah. I don't know that I've ever yeah, played know. this game. Oh, yeah, yeah, I played this tons of time in em emulation for sure. Um, but yeah, I would, I would love to if, if I, if I could sell my original one. I mean, yeah, just with the co the full coin door and the extra game, that's enough for me right there. Yep. Oh, you can sell your original. You'll have no problem. Trust me. Put it up tomorrow. And see what happens. Someone's been trying to buy my big blue, uh, but they hadn't sent the right number yet, so I still sits back there unplayed. <laughs> I'll sit on it. Screw them. <laughs> 
So although a lot of us are with the been there, done that, we've seen it before, we're on the edges of our seat, we're waiting for something new and exciting to talk about, although a lot of us are like, oh my god, here we go again. Let's not forget, guys, there's a lot of people who are new to this, new to our channels, new to this community, new to Arcade One Up, just discovering <coughs> these products, and for them, maybe this is exciting, and hopefully we gave you some good coverage here, kind of showed you what this machine is kind of going to be about yeah this might be the third golden tee a lot of us have seen but not everybody wanted to get an xl cab a lot of people have been patiently waiting to get a, another three-quarter scale arcade yep. uh one up golden tee cab to add to their collection so you know congratulations to them hmm. i'm glad it's not 5.99 4.99 is certainly a lot more digestible it's available for pre-order now and i think they're actually going to be coming out oh. to you guys may 9th so they're just around the corner if you're not in a rush I would recommend patience because I think we might see that thing a hundred bucks off come Father's Day weekend. You know what I mean? Something like that. Yeah, that's a smart call. Um, and if you think about it, like the XL version of this is what seven hundred bucks, six seven hundred bucks. And if you can get this, it's got the same lineup, same games. And if you can get this thing for four hundred bucks or less, in my opinion, that's a pretty good deal uh, for what you're getting. You know, classic Golden Tee games, better looking cabinet than the first machine. The big concern, too, is, is that trackball going to be as good as it was on the original Arcade 1-Up Golden Tee, or is it going to be a bumpy, grindy mess <clears throat> that it was on the XL? So, also wouldn't hurt to exercise patience and wait for some reviews, some other poor souls to <laughs> take the take the leap of faith before you and kind of let you know what it is so in my opinion my advice would be don't pre-order this one kind of wait till father's day maybe you'll, i i assume best buy every father's day they they knock like 50 100 bucks off all these arcade one-ups and that's not too far away guys that's like what less than two months away so there you go yeah the original golden tea that i regret uh, guys i regret getting rid of that thing if you guys remember they announced Golden TXL. I got hyped. I got excited. I immediately put my normal arcade one up Golden T on the market. I sold it for like 300 bucks, which pretty much almost paid for half <clears throat> of the new XL. Um, so, and then I get the XL and I was kind of disappointed in it. So, and I had a bad experience with it. So, uh, but yeah, that, that trackball was great on the original uh, compared to the XL. So there you go. <coughs> Toxin with some great advice. Just bust out the lube on your trackball. There you go. James hates everything, says he's going to volunteer his tribute. Sounds like he's picking one up. If you guys are picking up one of these, give me a one in the live chat. If you're not picking it up, give me a zero. Don't make me put those silly polls. I don't, I don't like those blue banners uh, hanging around the live chat the whole show. All right, but minus that, Mike, is there anything else going on in the world of Arcade 1-Up? No, uh, the rumors that are persisting is that expect more announcements from Arcade 1-Up around June. Uh, I don't think they'll do like an E3 event, like in person, but I expect that maybe they'll put out more announcements around June. Hopefully, we'll see something new and interesting around then. And you know, at some point, they're going to announce an XL cab with Costco, so... We'll wait and see what that is. I, it, it sucks because a lot of us were really hoping for like the levy to break and just a bunch of XL cabs to come out. And it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. Well, I don't know. It doesn't look like anything's the case right now. We're you know in month four and there's only two cabs announced from Arcade 1-Up at this point. Oh, someone mentioned earlier there's a sale on the Infinity Game Board going on at Target right now. I don't have any... that thing? Yeah. <laughs> Apparently Man. it's actually one of their best sellers, which... Mind-blowing. Mind there's, vid there's videos of Cyrus running around all over the place. Like He was in uh, North Dakota there last week running around. It's, it's wild to me. You can buy like a 27-inch tablet that does the same thing for like... Ninety-nine dollars on Ali AliExpress. It's wild. Well, that's where they got them all from. They're from that's AliExpress, and they, they just, just repackaged them. Yeah, they got some plastic legs and just glued them on, right. put them in a box, and then shipped it out. Unbelievable. Good stuff. 
All right, they're saying we got an echo on the mic. How about now, guys? I've been tinkering with the audio here. Do we still have that echo? Let me know in the live chat. I don't hear it myself. I was hearing it at the end there when I was talking last. Do you guys hear an echo coming from me? No. Nope. All right, good. Good stuff. This next topic is going to excite to Trey Love. I definitely want to hear his thoughts on this because he's been doing a lot of light gun builds. And there's this new company up in Canada, and they're doing something interesting <laughs> at a hefty price tag. Yes. <laughs> Why are you giggling, man? I can't wait to talk about this. Michael B's been waiting all week, guys, to let you know all about the awesome power of the Crosscade. Tell me all about the Crosscade, Michael B, and then I'll, I'll I did some research on this. I'll, I'll help fill in the blanks. Yeah. So um, earlier this week, uh, we have like this group chat for the guys in the RK One Up Canadian fan page, and our buddy Conti threw this up there, and he's like, "What do you think, guys?" So that group chat where RK One Up really hasn't been doing a lot has turned uh, not so positive towards RK One Up, and everybody's really into the light guns and stuff now. So. A tool, Conti, Mark Edwards, they're always like sharing videos on light gun builds. So Conti brought this up and I was like, that is a piece of shit. And he was like, I don't know, man, it seems like pretty good value. <laughs> but uh, you just scroll down so people can get a look at this full thing here. So what it is, it's this standing TV stand with a desk built out onto it with a like a Pandora's box controller. And then they also include a retro shooter kit. So it's supposed to be an all-in-one consoleized uh, setup for your home and the price point is the exciting part because the crossfire uh, this is the cross fade which doesn't include the retro shooter but if you go down a little bit further you'll get to the crossfire which is the one I'm going to show you <laughs> it's the same thing and it includes the uh, retro shooter kit is $1,075 Canadian so basically Does it come with a TV comes with a TV a coat rack and then a desk attached to the coat rack with a uh, Pandora's box controller and the retro shooter guns. Hold on. For sure it comes with a TV, though? I thought yes, it, it said... does. It does. Okay, I thought it said that it No, nope, it does come with the TV. A 32-inch TV. Yeah. That's so the too t much. The, the TV's not included. No, it is. Oh, the TV is included? Apparently. Yeah, scroll up. I don't think the TV's included. Apparently, the TV is included because Conti reached out to him. I don't know. Scroll so, up some more. Scroll up some more. Because it says that it can fit a certain size TV, but it doesn't say the TV is okay. included. Well, I mean, for a thousand bucks, the TV better be included. Take oh, yeah. command. Like Wait, well, take command of the game with the 32 inch screen. Yeah, it's there. Okay. Yep. Okay. So they are giving. Okay. At least they're giving you the TV with this. Because if you weren't getting a TV with this, holy crap, was this going to be too much money? Now and they it's still, it's still a little too much money. Now I, I'm not completely shitting on this company. They do like custom arcade builds and stuff like that, and they're like a home company. It's not uh, that dissimilar to like what Buy Stuff Store is doing. But I'm just looking at this, and Conti was like, you know, uh, they were doing pricing out the value on it. So 32 inch TV, uh, 4K TV. I mean, what's that like? 100, 200 bucks, and then uh, Pandora's box. Uh, the coat rack and the TV stand attached to the coat rack. <laughs> but the, the Pandora's box doesn't display in 4K, does it? I don't know. I just, so why would you put a 4K? Thing I don't even know if it's display? 4K TV. It's I, like, probably I, I, not a 4K TV. I was just I was just looking at it and I was like, why would you buy this? Why wouldn't you just yeah. get Retro Shooter and plug it into your Hack Games Legends Ultimate if you wanted an arcade yeah. setup that bad? Yeah, I, I'm going to say this yeah. is definitely not a 4K display. And I'm going to say, is it made out of metal or is it plastic? Uh, I think maybe metal. I don't know. It's made out of genuine imitation metal, Rostalgia. <laughs> ah. Saskatchewan seal skin leather. <laughs> Where are they located? Uh, they're in Canada somewhere about, let's see, Crosscades. Uh, get to know us. Get to know us. Uh, Crosscades. Ottawa. 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 Nothing in Ottawa is good. That, that, there it is right there. <laughs> Nothing in Ottawa is good. Nostalgia <laughs> knows that. Yeah, Ottawa is an interesting place. Yeah. yeah, can you get this without the television? Yeah, Steven, you just order a retro shooter kit for retro <laughs> shooter directly. <laughs> it's just, it's just, like, I, I don't really understand what the, um, I don't really understand what the appeal to this uh, is. Like, just get know. the retro shooter kit. 
if you got a TV on the wall, just play like that. I mean, yes, I don't get the it. Appeal, the appeal to this is for somebody who's just looking for an all-in-one solution if they have nothing to start with. <laughs> I guess so. I mean, like, there's just so many options out there. I just don't get it. So, this is anyways, one of them. Uh, Conky right. was like, I, I think I like it. I want like a setup, and I don't know. Uh, real quick, guys, just pivoting back to Arcade One Up. I saw Moat was in the chat, and I swear I just saw a Discord post where Moat said he's doing another Arcade One Up tournament. This one isn't official; it's just him doing an Arcade One Up tournament. And Moat's like one of the only guys out there hosting these tournaments, and pe some people love participating. So, if you guys don't know, Back Alley Seven Eleven on YouTube, Mike of All Trades. If you guys are interested, Marvel versus Capcom tag team tournament on may 4th so make sure you guys go check out moat's channel as well as the back alley 7-eleven on youtube hopefully i said that right because i think it's the know. back alley 707 i'm almost <laughs> sure back alley 7-eleven what oh, up man. moat what up moat oh my god my dog is going nuts down there she's barking so anyways me. i just i just saw this and i was like fascinated by it and i was like a thousand dollars man like you think about people complaining about the price of like arcade one up at least you get like a cabinet form factor there you're mm -hmm. getting a screen you're getting a separated uh mm -hmm. sound speaker system it's not built into the tv so yeah. uh now nah, you're being too hard on it man how much do you pay right now for an arcade one up like a machine what are they, like, like a machine? I, I paid 4.99 for my t2 what's what's the normal retail price Re Let's normal this is coming up right now. Yeah, normal what, six, retail price nine, is about seven fifty. Seven fifty. So seven fifty. Okay. This you're getting a thirty two inch display. You're gonna get a ton of games. You get the Pandora's box system. It's not bad if you're comparing it to a brand new machine and not something that's already been on sale. But it's also hyper niche. Like the person oh, yeah. who's gonna buy this isn't buying it for the aesthetics. They're buying it <clears> solely to play. This is like something you would buy and throw in your garage as like a garage arcade, not something you put in the game or your bar or something like the that. The garage yeah. game. <laughs> no, I, I mean, you look at the rest of their stuff. The rest of their stuff is like, you know, more along the lines of something cool someone would have in their home. I just, I don't get the, um, I, they don't even call it an arcade. They call it like, uh, what is it, a console or whatever, right? But, I don't know. Crossfade. <laughs> the crossfade. <laughs> I don't know why I don't even know why you wanted to talk about this tonight, Mike, but I appreciate I appreciate the uh Well the light guns light guns are the hot new, right? And that's all anyone yeah. wants to talk about now is the retro shooter. So I just yeah. saw this this past week and I wanted to bring it up and get everybody else's opinion on it and try to talk Conti out of buying it. <laughs> oh Conti was interested? Con oh, yeah, Conti Con needs to buy this. He's Conti he's gonna do a solid favor. Yeah. He has to do us a favor, and he's got to bite the bullet. He's got to buy it. He's All got right. to prove Charlie Chuck wrong. All right. Well, I look forward to seeing. I look forward to seeing that happen. So there you go. Uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, um, personally, buy stuff store. Dear God, do something better than that right. and sell it to Conti. Just walk him off the cliff here. <laughs> All right. My uh, my dog is still barking down there. I don't know what's going on. I'm the only one home, so I'm going to jump out. Mike, just kind of take over. And uh, I'll yeah, be right sure. back in a couple of minutes. Yeah, I just so you know, idea. P Dubs, we couldn't hear anything. So, oh, but I can hear it. She's been barking for like four minutes straight. So I don't know what's going on. So, <clears> no, Mike, sometimes go you got to go take care of your dog. So yep, go uh, ahead, we Mike. we got a comment here from Chit for Brains. Anyone here order a retro shooter and not get an email saying your zip is a remote location? Remote area code. I don't know what I that means. Think he, I don't think he wanted the word "not" in there. I think he's asking if. Did get it uh, email um, saying that it's a remote area. That's exactly. I have heard of people. I've I've heard of people uh, getting charged extra because they're uh, they, they were they they were in a remote area, uh, but it didn't happen to me, and I don't believe it happened to P Dubs either. But and it's not everybody, but there's some few people. I guess if you live in Iowa or Kansas or something, I don't know. <clears throat> so uh, I was talking to Travis the other day, and uh, you know, MK Spectate is still coming. I don't know why it's taking so long, what the problem is, but uh, yeah, we're still getting an MK Spectate. Hopefully, with that update on MK Spectate, they find some way to make the internet less shitty on it as well, because I'm still having a lot of problems connecting um, uh, through my uh, 
through my Wi-Fi. So there we go. Detroit is definitely not remote. Yeah. All right, guys. So moving on from there, um, what do you guys want to talk about next? Let's talk about at games. So there's been some pretty big at games news that came out this past week. We'll start with Star Trek. So if you guys are in any of the Facebook groups for at games, the official 4K group, the official or the Canadian 4K group, other things like that, you may have seen people posting their pictures uh, mainly today and yesterday about receiving their Star Trek 4K P machines, and I gotta say, this actually looks really nice. I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of that IP. I would have uh, preferred a next generation table, but I get it. This is for the new, celebrating the new Star Trek games that were coming out, and I gotta say, honestly, the table in person looks pretty rad. It looks like a good table. Let's see if I got one of those open here, guys, so I can share it with you. Uh, Steven, have you seen any of the pictures on this? Nope. I have not been on social media for like the last week. I have not, uh, haven't seen anything. Have I've tried not to see anything. Um, but uh, to be honest, I'm not really surprised that this machine looks good in person. In fact, I'm pretty sure every single machine that Ad Games is going to put out with this 4K pinball yeah. is going to look good. Every single one has they've done an exceptional job with. So, yeah, the designs have just been amazing. So. Here we go here. Here's one lucky owner. There's the machine in person. I don't know what he's got the grainy pictures for, but there it is. Star Trek looking pretty sexy. Um, I don't know how I feel about the different art side and side. Like, I mean, it's up for you. I don't, I don't like this movie series, but eh, I still think it's a very nice looking machine, man. I, I actually yeah, agree they did that. a good job. They did a good job with with the the, the design. I mean, obviously the the 1.0 uh, cabinet was had the wrong shape at the front. I mean, it was too narrow. The back glass wasn't nice. You had the logos everywhere. Uh, this this looks like a pinball machine. And yeah. I, any 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 uh, recognizable you know uh, what's the labels that you put on this, I think it's going to look good. Uh, I. I I personally like the um, the alien one. I can't even think what name of it was. It um, Attack from Mars. Attack from Mars would be the one I would get. Um, yeah. But yeah, I don't think any of them are gonna look bad because it, the shape of this thing is just perfect. I love the back box on this one. I mean, the actual back box Star Trek up here and the uh, I don't know what you call it. The you know crest of the planet there looks beautiful, and that topper is gorgeous, the topper man. Looks phenomenal. Oh yeah, the topper is beautiful. That's 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 the nicest topper they've released, without question. I don't even like Star yeah, Trek. So, yeah, but, here's uh, a that, that is arguably the nicest topper that they've released. It looks so good. This is a little bit of video yeah, they, from they're Paul doing, Fuller. They're doing a really the good job with these. Yeah, they're they're doing a really good job with these machines. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, going, everything's you know, looking going good. The speaker, yep, you know the speaker grill, you know, down to the. Everything on it, they just did an excellent job with this uh, with this cabinet. So, uh, and the, and the price is not bad. I mean, people people talk about the pricing of these things. For if you was to try and go and buy a cabinet, uh, a digital cabinet, it, you're going you're going to pay way more than this. So, uh, I think this I think this is great value, definitely great value on on the cabinet. I wish I could get one. I, I really do. Yeah, I, I'm uh, I'm holding out hope that we're going to see a uh, a South Park version. I think I'd get really really excited if they did a South Park skin machine. Uh, the, I don't I don't know if I can see it, but I I saw people like honestly. Here's something I was surprised by. I saw lots of people in the community with multiple tables, like with a Attack from Mars and a Star Wars, an Adams and a Star Wars. It looks like people are actually getting multiple Legends 4KPs for the mm -hmm. different art packages, and that's something I didn't anticipate. I thought people would buy one, not multiple. So I've seen uh, c uh, at least two or three people in the community with multiple Legends 4KP machines because of the different art packages. I was really surprised by that. Yeah, I yeah. mean, today, if you're trying to do a, a, a game room right from scratch or you're trying to build onto yours, I mean, the, the price set, again, you can complain about it 
all you want but if you look at a real uh table both you guys have real pinball tables in your house currently and, and those things are just ridiculous because if you could buy you know 10 of these things and have a great uh game room and come nowhere near or close to the price of a real one so uh it, it makes sense i mean your your buddy uh that had all of the arcades i mean mike dalton I can, yeah, I, yeah mike dalton yeah I, I never quite understood that um but i can see it happening with uh with these 4k cap uh, captains for sure oh and they just yeah. showed the dedicated startup uh let me see if i can find that uh the, the other thing they talked about look there it is right there out of this galaxy pinball adventure so they knew, now have a new attack from Mars one that dropped the other day. So uh, I don't know if you guys saw that one yet. Uh, I'll see if I can find some video of that. That one's actually pretty funny too. So uh, they just released the attack from Mars one, and I like that. That's a nice touch too. It's a lot like with Arcade One Up, how they have the custom things like you know Luke Hang mm -hmm. comes out and kills the Arcade One Up logo. So I thought that was a nice touch too. Um, let me see if I can find it. Well, there's a Star Trek. There's the Builder's Plate that came out. Oh, man, that Attack from Mars is freaking gorgeous. I'm in love with this machine. Yeah, yeah that man. is awesome. Did they, did they update, update the uh, UI? Yeah, that's what I'm trying mm -hmm. to find here yeah. now. Let's see if this is it. Okay, okay. Yep, here it is, right here. With the cow getting zoomed up. I, I mm. like those those little. I love that. They're, yeah. like, they're a nice little touch. Have they sorted out the the flipper issue, or is that still in in progress? Still, uh, still in progress. There were release notes for when Attack from Mars came out, and they said there is still noticeable flipper lag. I think it's safe to say on every Zen pinball release uh, coming out right now, you are going to get a slight, uh, well, noticeable flip flipper leg, and they're going to keep working on it. From what I heard, Adam's family has a unique uh, situation where I think that one's going to be harder to figure out than the rest of them, but, and you know, they're in it, they're both in it for the long haul here. This is a long-term partnership between At Games and Zen Studios. They're going to figure it out, so hopefully it's soon. Yeah, this, this is... I've seen some people talking about them thinking it's a hardware related issue uh, versus software. And it's absolutely just, it's absolutely not a hardware related issue. This is, this is something that they can resolve with software. And I don't know what their, their issue is and what, what the struggle is on this one um, or what it typically is. Zen, Zen unfortunately has had, like this isn't the first time that Zen has had this issue no. um, with the, the PlayStation five release. There was like significant, flipper lag um but they they ended up figuring that out and i don't know if there was on the xbox too um i only played it on the ps5 when it first came out on pinball fx and it was terrible um but they fixed it and now it plays great so it's just a matter of getting the right resources and time and hopefully they figure that out soon because as these machines keep coming out i think that is it's going to be uh, an important thing for them to clean up all right, sorry about that, guys. The uh, the doggy door was shut, and the dog had to drop an anchor, so she was barking down there, telling me, "Somebody <clears throat> come, let me out." Right. So, but yeah, we well, took care of all be that. Cleaning up a mess. Yeah. I've, so awesome. here's uh, something awesome. I talked about on the radio this past week. Um, the radio host said to me, he "said Hey, what's been the reception like from like the audience and the community?" And I was like, "Everybody's really nice, except." People are really hard on my accent. And I was like, you know how we say Mario in Newfoundland, but in the rest of the world, they say Mario, right? And uh, the other one people give me a hard time about is I say attack from Mars or attack from Mers instead of saying attack from Mers. It's just big. It's our Newfoundland <laughs> accent. Insane. Did I really? I was trying to say it differently. I'm sorry. It's my <laughs> accent. And I was like, I get roasted, roasted on that. So we made fun of that a bit. Could you catch up? <laughs> well, it, it is some words you do say; they sound kind of funny uh, to to us here in the uh, in the states. Yeah. All right. So, um, since we're talking at games, did you talk the renovation packs yet? We're going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, have you got a chance to look at any of the footage from the Star Trek tables that released? What did you think of them? I know you were pretty happy with the changes when... they did to the art. You did a video on that a little while back. Uh, uh, people actually receive their Star Trek? Yeah, we were just going over some. I'll bring it back up for oh. you to take a look. 
Yeah, let me. Yeah, show me the pictures of of it. I haven't seen any pictures of the video. machine in real life. Okay, here we go. Video. Yeah, we got video and everything, man. Look at uh, that. Hit that. Hit that maximize button. Right there. Yeah. Oh, look at right. those hands. Someone right, earlier got... said Chris Pine's got a huge forehead. My wife said he did a nude scene yeah. in the movie, and that's not the only thing that's big. All right. So you just showed this a minute ago, right? Well, this is the rest of the footage. Yeah, I was showing it okay. earlier. All right. I want to see the other side. I really liked the uh, the other side. Of the, the other side there. is really nice. Do you think the... they should have done both sides that way, or are you okay with it being split? I don't know. I, I, I don't like this side as much as the other, I will be honest. I think it yeah. would have been nice if the artwork was more uniform <clears> on both sides. I love, love the back box. I think the back box is incredible, and I love the topper. I think the topper looks great. Beautiful, even. Yep, I like that they actually have like the ship popping out of the topper now. Yeah, because they redid the topper design, they redid the back box design. That looks so much better than their original design. Did, did, I, mean, I did, wish they could have. I wish they could have not had the screws on the on the back glass on the screen, but uh, yeah, you know, it's not a big deal. But did he show the other side? He did. It was at the beginning of the video. Yeah. Like, I'll oh, play it again if you want. Yeah, yeah. Can you go back and see. Look at know. that. It looks so, so nice. good. Make that yeah. big. Yeah, that looks. That looks <laughs> That's what she good. said. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna say it. People hate it when we complain, but we we're here to provide feedback and we just share opinions. In my opinion, both sides of the machine should have been like the this side here. You know what I mean with the with the blue stars and everything like they. Do, fixed, do you mean like it should have been a mirror image, or do you mean it just should have had the same <clears throat> no, no. style? What style? Same, same, same style, but not the actors on the other side. Maybe they would have done like some more Star Trek ships. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like maybe 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 the Enterprise that's on the topper. You just make that cover that whole side panel, just a giant picture of the Enterprise. Or, you know what I mean? Like. I just think that the that that blue it just it pops so nice. It looks so freaking good. And then you go to this side and you're like, "Oh, it's just it's like a photo. It's like a cast photo." You know. Uh but it does look way better than their initial designs, you know. Does it I mean? come with that screen, that rubberized no, cover? No I, no, I think he put that on there. I was going to say that's Yeah, some kind of space be be yeah, like, yeah, JT like Okay, on the right hand side, you got the blue with all the act with the actors, but on the left hand side, you put like the Enterprise and another ship having a little space battle against each other. What was oh, the what was the ship in the? Uh... Yeah, the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> I I actually kind of like this side. I I think I think I do like the other side, the the color scheme better, but I think this side looks fine. Like. I don't really see an issue. And I'm willing to bet you there's a good chunk of people who actually prefer this side over the other. So it, I don't know. I think I think it looks it looks good. <clears throat> I don't have an issue with it. All right. Well, that's cool. I still want a South Park machine. Yep. I love that back box in the top. Oh, I mean, it's that, so to good. me, that's the best yeah. part of the machine. Like, that's gorgeous. Everything looks good until you get to the left side of the machine, you know. Yeah, with with, with pinball traditionally, um, and, and they the, should have done the uh, blue stars right here on the front, like yeah, the, behind the planet, behind the Enterprise on the front by the by the coin door, like that. That blue should have been everywhere. Agreed. This, like traditionally with pinball machines, yeah. both sides are uniform, and the front's kind of uniform. The art kind of wraps around the cabinet, so it's yeah. a little weird um, sometimes seeing it change so drastically from one side to the yeah. next. But I definitely love what they did. All the fixes they did to the back box, the topper, and the right side are, are they look great. They look really good. All right, let's get that off of there. Uh, let's move over real quick. We'll come back to some more pinball stuff here in a minute because we do have a lot of uh, pinball updates for Mac games that we want to talk about. Uh, so for those of you who pre-ordered over a year ago, Mac games had announced that, hey, the uh, reno they signed a, a licensing agreement with the renovation to bring 21 renovation games to the At Games Arcade Family products as packs that you could buy and download. There were two packs. So everyone's been waiting for like well over a year for these for this these games to become available. And At Games put out an announcement. Let's take a look at this announcement. This came out earlier today. 
Looks like they're finally coming out April 25th, but check this out. They took a, they had to take away five games. They took away Valis 2, Valis 3, Cosmic Fantasy 2, Last Alert, and Exile Wicked Phenomenon. So that means you're only going to have 16 games, eight games on each pack. But they're compensating people and giving everyone who ordered a $10 credit or a $10 e-store coupon. So at least they did something for the last-minute change. I still think it's kind of weird. Rostalgia, why do you think these games, these five games, didn't make it into the final cut? What are, you, what are your predictions, assumptions, thoughts? Um, <coughs> I actually have no idea. My, my gut would say um, either they were having issues with um, performance on those titles um, or it's some sort of a licensing issue. If there's like something within those games that they couldn't get the full license and therefore you couldn't release the title... Um, I really can't think of any other reason outside of like either compatibility or performance thing or, uh, or a straight up licensing issue. But Mike, you, you seem to know, Mike, tell us. Yeah, uh, no, I don't know, but uh, I just oh. wanted to respond to Toxin. Toxin, they're all console games. Every single game in both those packs were console games. So uh, if you could bring them back up that notice P, uh, P-Dubs. Oh, uh, yeah, Go like I, I did want to say this. Jason brought up a really good comment. Jason's a man who knows his stuff, too. Um, I, I understand that you have to take some games away. It is really disappointing, though, because 100%, I mean, you look at this list, Valis 2 and Valis 3 are, um, even though you, they're console games, they're some of the best games in this pack. Uh, same with Last Alert and Exile. There's four really, really good, really popular renovation games that are leaving that aren't going to be coming out. So I'm glad they did some compensation, but... It really sucks you guys are losing Dallas. Like, uh, I, I go, need to go back and look at the list, see what else is there, because I think there's one really, really, really good shooter. Um, uh, I can't remember. It's got a really funny name now. The box was orange. can't remember it off the top of my head, but, like, losing Dallas 2 and Dallas 3 sucks. Uh, really does. So, very, very sad. Um, Gairez. That's the name of the game. Gairez. See, so you still get Gairez, which is an amazing console shooter uh, shooter but losing valis 2 and valis 3 is a kick in the nuts i'm not gonna lie good stuff man uh move to all right here we go so i got something else for you guys to see right here so check this out this is we have a let's get that off the screen as well this is uh, at Games Legends Pinball 4k this is the attack from mars and the adams family side by side that's right brian in the officially unofficial Facebook group, which I just shared a link for in the in the chat, uh, he has both of them. Hey, can, can can you answer a question for me in the live chat, buddy? Like, why did why did you buy more than one? We were talking about this while you were ass. gone. We were talking about this while you were gone. I was talking about the fact that I saw people with multiple machines as well, like Adam's family and Star Trek. I saw another person with yeah. Attack and Star Trek. But I'm why? really surprised. Um, I, I guess why. it's for the art. Yeah, definitely let me know why you bought more than one in the live chat. Uh, but this way you guys get a view of it. Now, take a look at that Attack from Mars uh, back box, uh, back glass image. It, it, it doesn't fill up the whole screen. Do you guys see that? Mm hmm And I guess uh, uh, Brian was talking in the Facebook group. He was saying that he wasn't able to fix it. So Well, fix what? Because you can adjust the sizes. But can you? He was, yeah, on the back glass images. But this is this is it at, at full screen. So it's like maybe this is something that they need to fix, like in a firmware update or something. Is isn't that the um, if go back? Can you like stop on the aspect or on the the display? Because isn't that the correct aspect ratio for that image? It is, yeah. So people would prefer to stretch the image. No, they wanna they wanna pan and scan. So what uh, they wanted to do is what like Arcade One Up did with their back just box. make it bigger and then just cut off. Make the it bottom. bigger and cut off some from the bottom. Yeah, I see. Yeah, it's interesting. Mm. That's yeah, that's actually an interesting. I, I idea. guess I guess you could go both ways with the thought process on that. Yeah, but... I, I don't know. I see that 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 looks to me. I would want the proper aspect ratio, but. The, I think the only thing I don't like is that the like and maybe it's just the way he's filming it, but the like the black bars on the side, they, they stand out a little bit because it, they're almost like glowing gray. 
So if there's a way to adjust that, but again, I don't know if that's being picked up on camera or if that looks that way in person. Uh, well, I, I think it's good that people are bringing this up. This is some constructive feedback for at games and they can take it back yeah. now and do what they want with it. And more than likely yeah. they'll make it so you can pan and scan those to fill up the whole screen. Or maybe they're waiting to do a more high res image that does the full, full screen. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, do us a favor. Kevin clausen has been waiting all show for Rostalgia to tell us the value of something. <laughs> Rostalgia, tell us the value of the At Games Legends Pinball 4K Backbox. Uh, I wasn't prepared for this. Um, I don't know much about it. Uh, the value of one of the At Games Legends 4K Pinball Backglasses is top tier. It's not just top tier. It is top notch. It is bazinga. It is amazing. It is above and beyond anything that they've released to date. And I tell you why. It comes with not just one screen, but it comes with two beautiful LCD displays to display all of your high scores and a dynamic back glass display depending on the title you are playing the value is literally all there all the time every day ooh, yeah, ooh. <laughs> we just need carl now to tell us what would someone from detroit say about these pinball machines carl i have no idea man no idea um let's get, let's get I, I mean I, I love this that's my favorite there is the uh attack from mars attack. that thing looks absolutely beautiful Love it. Are you gonna Absolutely are you gonna or, or are you gonna order that one, Carl? Yeah, when you were gone I talked about that as well. I would love to get rid of this one with the broken Bobby V uh Bobby uh uh V's uh, back glass on the back and uh this thing is just it's just a lemon. It's just a lemon right here. <laughs> you know, it, it, all it does is holds my elbow up. That's all it does. Oh you know, like when you're doing what, a video. Did you guys show yeah, the new Attack from Mars uh, startup screen that just we came did? Out? Yeah. Oh, you yeah. guys already showed it. Yes, yeah. Can okay. I show it? It's only five Perfect. seconds. Can I, can I can I look at it real quick? Yeah. So, just want to take a look. All right. I, I like the whole Mars planet there. That looked pretty cool. All right. So anytime they release a skin of these machines, they're gonna have a custom startup screen for that skin. So, um, in my opinion, that's that's cool. Like I like I like the little screen, the little video that plays when you turn on Adam's Family. The only thing I don't like is after it gets to the main menu, the main menu music. I I just yeah, can't I, stand it. I haven't heard that. I, yeah, that. yeah, have to go to the settings. Just the, just the repeated music on most of those old tables. The attract mode. Yes. The attract mode music is just. I hate it. It's it sounds like that crappy music that like Zen Studios puts on like their Pinball FX platform. You know, like when you first turn on Pinball FX and you hear this really crappy elevator music, you know. How I mean? dare you? That music that, is my jam, man. That is. That that's is what not, that's what me and my wife bump and grind that to. Is not, that is not exciting to me at all, my friend. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Uh, Mike, uh, more pinball news coming from Mac Games. Uh, you know what? You got to say one thing. <clears throat> When I see companies like Arcade What Up completely just stop talking to their customers, and At Games is at least trying to talk to their customers, trying to come up with ways to engage with their community. I mean, you gotta give you gotta give them props for that. They did something weird this week where they're like, "Hey guys, solve these cryptic clues," and we got a big announcement coming later in the week. And here's the announcement: uh, one of you gentlemen, since I've been hogging the mic, what is this announcement? What is this? Well, if you could crack the code, it wasn't uh, Y2J, save us Y2J. In fact, this time, it was new Legends 4K Pinball Flipper Friends. So if you remember the calendar of events, this is the day they were supposed to announce a surprise tournament. So this yeah. is it. And they've got a month schedule of tournaments. If you want to go to the next slide, uh, nice friendly thing there. you got to make this bigger because my eyesight is terrible. So if you go up to week one... Uh, from April 19th to the 25th, uh, there's going to be tournaments, and I guess it's going to be leaderboard score tournaments. Uh, that's mm -hmm. the way it's going to work. So Star Trek Pinball, the Kelvin timeline, non-Zen is going to be Space Invaders, and then Pinball Net. Uh, is Pinball Net? Pinball Net is going to be up and running uh, according to the calendar sometime next week, 16th, I think it was. I might be wrong now with it not in front of me directly. Then uh, 426 to 5-2, we got Star Trek Pinball Discovery, Legend of Kage, 
Voyager, Zachariah, and then it just yeah. keeps going on. You got a different bunch of out pinball of, events. Uh, out of all the Taito games that they've put out, The Legend of Kage is the one that gives me the most trouble because it has multiple flippers on the bottom row. And if you're not careful, the ball will go in between those flippers and you lose. Kind of like when you play Haunted House, where it's got multiple flippers on the bottom row. And that game, The Legend of Kagi, kicks my ass every time I've played it on the At Games pinball machines. Uh, real quick, let's just go back, because I, I really wanted to hear why someone would buy more than one of these machines. And Big B uh, says here, or Brian... If back in December, there was a rumor going around that if you didn't get your attack from Mar your Adams family, you could cancel the order. So he took the chance and pre-ordered the attack from Mars. And then he added, he prefers attack from Mars. So are you going to sell Adams family or are you going to keep them both? Let us know in the live chat, buddy. Um, but yeah, if you want to own more than one machine, man, that's totally up to you. Like, for instance, you could have one machine where you're like, hey, I'm just going to use this machine just to run stock games, and the next machine I turn it into... Oh my god, Mike, you okay? Yeah, I dropped my phone. I was trying to buy my lottery <laughs> tickets. I've got 13 minutes to do so. Is the dog okay? Uh, actually, no. My dog is <laughs> not okay. Uh, um, I, I was supposed to be on B's show yeah. last night, and I had to cancel because... Yeah. My my poor dog, um, somehow, who's still alive after having heart problems, all kinds of other problems. We have him on, um, oh, no. on every medicine you can think of. Same one that fell down yep. the stairs and like uh, broke part of his back. Like He made a full recovery from that. He was awesome. Mm -hmm. My daughter brought a bunch of Easter chocolate into the uh, playroom there yesterday, and the dog got at it when no one was paying attention. So the dog's been throwing up like all last night and today, and every time he throws up, a pile of like tin foil comes out with it from all the Easter eggs he ate and stuff. So he's not good right now. Like my wife pulled me aside and had another conversation with me about what happens. And my daughter feels terrible. She feels like it's her fault. It has not been a good couple of days involving the pets. I'm sorry, Mike. I'm sorry to hear that, Mike. All right, I got a question here. Maybe one of you guys can answer it for me. So we have Zen Games. What, where'd Mike go? Oh, he turned himself off. Yeah. He's picking up his the mess he made. Yeah. So we have Zen games. We have non-Zen games. Those lottery tickets, he said. So got their but then they have the pinball neck games. Now, these Black Hole, Gottlieb games, Zakaria games, these are non-Zen games. Are they saying that only pinball net players are going to be eligible to play that particular game for that tournament? Uh, it so, sounds that way, yeah. So it sounds like they're trying to get people to play on Pinball Net. Now, luck luckily, a lot of people got Pinball Net for free with their machines for a couple months, so you could try it out if you want. But um, I'm probably not going to participate in those, but I'll play the Zen and the non-Zen games. Now, what's interesting about this is this actually gives us a really good idea as to what their expected release dates are for these packs, for these games. Such as you see Star Trek coming out April 17th, all the Star Trek games. You got Attack from Mars coming out May 8th for everybody who doesn't have an Attack from Mars game. Um, Star Trek The Next Generation, May 15th. So here's what kind of stinks, though, is as we all know, Act Games sometimes has delays, right? Like they, they updated Attack from Mars, but then they had to de delay the, the update for, what was it, Peanuts or Snoopy this week, right? And... If they don't get those games released on time or launched on time when people are expected to play the tournaments, then it's just going to get all confusing and some people might get upset. We'll see if they can actually hit these launch dates. And also, how good are these games going to play? At least the Zen games, it's still a matter of contestation. Some people will tell you they, they, they're fine with it. Some people will tell you, even with all the fixes they've done so far, it's still not quite there yet in regards to performance <coughs> so we'll have to see but at least we kind of know when these games are coming out on the platform mm -hmm. so, and everyone's got the same disadvantage like if there is yeah like, that's good say. it's the if, same if there is true for everybody flipper, that is like, true everyone everyone's playing on the it's not like anyone has an yeah. advantage right so yeah but the uh the zakaria games the magic pixel games uh like natural history and stuff uh the taito games they they play like fantastic on on the 4k machine 
They play just as good as they do on the HD machines. There's like no noticeable flipper delays or things like that. They they run efficiently. In fact, they run and look a little bit better than they do on the high def machines. But I'm excited that they're doing some of the Taito games on here. I know not everyone likes the Taito pinball packs, but we got like Frontline, dude. How many of you like Frontline? I think Frontline was a great game that they did. The only games I don't like are, unfortunately, a lot of the um, I, I marquee games for those t lists. Like, I don't like the ones that are the challenge ones, so I don't like oh, the Space camp, Invaders, the camp, Operation games. Wolf, uh, Bubble Bobble, those games. Yeah, th those three, yeah. Yeah, the campaign tables are, they're, they're not for everybody, you know, where you have characters walking towards you and you got to kill them all to move on to the next stage, like... Carl, what do you think of the campaign tables? Yeah, the campaign tables just drove me crazy. <laughs> I, I just did not enjoy the gameplay on those at all. Uh, I I remember when when uh, Zen uh, on FX3, we were doing a lot of tournaments back in the day, and I enjoyed that. So I'm glad to see that they're doing these tournaments. I think that, that brings the community together, uh, and it's just a lot of fun. Pinball is a lot of fun, but it's a lot of fun when you can compete against other people. Uh, for the score, so I like the idea <coughs> of this. Now, are there any prizes involved with these? Uh, mm. I know, I know. At one point in time, they were giving out tables and uh, like that, uh, for not, but uh, this is just all about fun. No, no prizes. I don't know for sure. Uh, Mike, do you remember if they're doing prizes? Um, no, I didn't see anything about prizes. Uh, yeah, no, that's fine. Right. Yeah, that's we'll fine. It's, 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 it's nice to have yeah. these tournaments what one thing i would like to see them do at some point and i don't know if they have the um, infrastructure to do it within their system is carl we just talked about uh pinball fx and one of the things i love doing like uh our buddy um gregory's doing it in the community a lot of other people are doing it in the community too mcap always did one and uh, p-dubs i think you're doing one as well through your discord uh right now too Mm -hmm. is all these pinball fx tournaments where it, it's not a tournament like overall leaderboard but you can invite friends and have this like closed tournament between people i would love to see act games figure out some way to set that up where you go into act games and i could just invite a bunch of friends and be like next week shooting the rapids come on everybody come out and challenge me and it's just my friend group it's not like we're all comparing our leaderboard scores it's just a closed tournament so i don't know if they can figure out some way yeah. to integrate that into the system but i think that would be a big winner too now all of these tournaments guys are supposed to be for the 4k machines that's right only. Yeah. now that does that mean they're not going to do tournaments for the high def owners who are the vast majority of their customers we don't know yet we'll have to see this is just what they announced today I find it interesting that we got a couple titles here. Now, I'll be honest, guys. I actually thought that these titles would become actual skins or variants that they release, including Godzilla vs. Kong. I, I figured we'd get some kind of Godzilla or Kong table from At Games. And you'll notice we got the games are coming out in about six weeks, May 29th, according to this. But they haven't announced that skin available for sale. So do you guys think that maybe this eliminates Twilight Zone and maybe a Godzilla table? Or do you think they'll still do that maybe so. in the future? No. Your internet crapped out. What'd you say, Rostalgia? I don't think I don't think it'll make um any difference in their release if um if Godzilla's gonna be one of the artwork packs or not. Um I think it's very likely that um at games perhaps is slowing down the release of the themed machines while they work through the uh, the flipper issue. And it would not surprise me if that wasn't resolved by... It would actually be a little bit surprising if it wasn't resolved or close to being resolved by the point that they launched this. But maybe what mm. they're doing is waiting to get that resolved and out and that off the table, and then they'll start announcing whatever artwork packs are coming out next. But yeah. I think that this is almost an indication that there's going to be a Godzilla versus Kong artwork package. Oh, you think so? I think th I think this is almost like um like an easter egg that that is what's going to happen. I, I would be incredibly surprised if they're going to put it as a um, as a feature in a tournament and not actually have a um, a machine. Like they they're they're promoting it obviously. So I think I think this is like an easter egg to 
to kind so of get you some, actually, some interest you, in it. All right, so you're going vice versa. I'm thinking that because no announcement has been made and the games are on here and, and coming out quickly, that eliminates a, a, a skin potential. But you're thinking the opposite. You're thinking this actually confirms we might get a Twilight Zone or some kind of Godzilla theme table coming out. I think so. I mean, how many do we still okay. have left? There's eight unannounced, or is it more than that? Is it 11? I can't remember how many they originally said there uh, were. There's, there's only, what, no, five announced so far? I think there's another 10 to go. Oh, wow. Or nine to go. Okay. So so there's 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 plenty. Um, and Godzilla vs. Kong is a very... It's a pretty popular IP. I think it would be silly for them not to do it. So from my from my perspective, I think this does nothing but solidify that that's, that's going to be one of the, um, the announced artwork packs. Let's get to the thoughts of the live chat here, guys. If they do release a Twilight Zone theme table, and we're assuming, like Adam's family, it would have Twilight Zone inspired artwork, not the actual original art pinball machine artwork, and as well as a custom, let's just say, Godzilla versus Kong skin. You got Godzilla on one side, Kong on the other. How would you guys feel about that in the live chat? Let me know. Definitely want to get your feedback. Mike, how do you feel about those? If that I'm happens. sorry, could you repeat that? How would you feel if there was a Godzilla vs. Kong skin or a Twilight Zone? Do you think those are winners or should... <clears throat> I think Twilight Zone absolutely is. Twilight Zone mm -hmm. is beautiful. I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I gotta be uh, careful here because you know what I want. I want a remake of the original table. That's what I want it to be. Like I think They're Attack from Mars. They're not gonna do that. Yeah, so I, I think the Zen art that's out there... Um, could still make a really nice looking table for twilight zone so i think that'd be a good one um godzilla versus kong hey uh i i mean you know the, it'll be mostly based on the new movies so uh, hopefully it looks good and hopefully people are interested in it be interesting if what they did on like a godzilla versus kong was that like the the back box and the topper like godzilla versus kong Mm -hmm. But then one side is Godzilla only, and the other side is Kong only. Yep. So they kind of like blend all three together on one machine. Uh, well, what would be really cool is if on one side it had Kong's stupid power glove, and then the other side it had like uh, Godzilla with all his the pink. Movies. They're not based on the movies. They're based on the the Zen Studios, um, Zen Studios. Uh, uh, original games that they and then in june they say title to be confirmed so the next game coming out june 26th so there you go what I, what i liked about this tournament thing is it kind of gave us uh, the expectations for when these games are coming out at least on the 4k platform and, and well this. well most of them were already announced right yeah i i don't remember i don't know yeah, yeah. All, all these uh, all these titles were already announced in the past we just i don't think we had release dates yeah yeah that's that's what i mean we have the actual release dates oh, okay right. yeah so good stuff man uh jt wants a pin bot a lot of people want those original you know it's kind of funny i i think mike or somebody i can't remember somebody on youtube was talking about what williams tables could they like actually do the actual artwork for and it seemed like the ones that are kind of Popular games, but probably easier for them to make happen would be the like the non Hollywood type IPs, right? Like Attack from Mars, the one they just made, it looks fantastic. It looks all damn near like a real Attack from Mars pinball. You would assume if they did a Medieval Madness uh, or the uh, Arabian Nights, it probably, in my opinion, how can you not afford to get that licensed artwork, right? But Twilight Zone and Indiana Jones and Adam's Family, it sounds like it's those tough. are going to be tougher to to get the original pinball machine artwork on. So, yeah. Monster Bash would be a big hit. Monster Bash, yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. Creature uh, in no, the Black Lagoon? Well, maybe not even Creature. Maybe not even Creature. creature would be hard as well. Like, yeah, I don't Creature know where would that be goes. hard. Yeah. yeah any any um, of the Williams Hollywood IPs, I would expect if they become a skin... I would yeah. expect it to be like Adam's Family. And by the way, I've told people before, even though it doesn't look like the original Adam's Family, I love it. I love all the green, like the oh, yeah, green artwork. That, yeah. I think I like, I personally, I like it more than the original Adam's Family artwork. But some I've prefer, heard the same thing. Yeah. Some people prefer the original. And trust me, you guys know me. If I thought it looked like shit, I'd tell you. I like it. I'm happy with the way it looks. So uh, another one of the original Williams games that I think would make a beautiful looking pin is Cirque Voltaire. 
Oh, Cirque yeah. Voltaire. Oh, yeah. It's what not about, popular fun, enough, but it's so nice looking. What about Funhouse? What about Funhouse? Fun, mm-hmm. Funhouse is a popular one. Would you guys uh, want I, a fun house? Let I often know. question when Arcade went up, I said if they do a wave two, that'll probably be the Williams one will be fun house because it wasn't on the first table. Yeah, yeah. when I was putting together my uh, toy shock, uh, fun mm-hmm. house was the first cabinet that I put on. And so I played tons. Of that. It's a tough, it's a tough game, but mm-hmm. uh, I, I love that. I love fun, t- fun house. Pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. Circus Voltaire, I, I don't know. I, I play it occasionally, but it's just... No, 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 no. no. You, you might not like the game. Take a look at the table. Okay, the, the artwork. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is a Machine, I gotta say machine. Sorry. Yeah, this is, this is interesting because a lot of people have been asking, like, um, what other Zen games are going to be coming to the platform? I remember when they announced the partnership shortly thereafter... They put together a marketing slick, and they said something around 30 to 40 game packs. So if you think about it, some of these game packs have three games. Some of these game packs will just have a single game. In my opinion, we're gonna they're going to be around 100 pinball games. So pretty much almost the entire Pinball FX library is the way I kind of look at it. Mm-hmm. So like, it, it, the way I would think about it is like, if this game is coming, the answer is probably yes because of the amount of packs they confirmed would be coming over the next few years. But keep in mind, too, that's that's if you want to play to download and run them off the machine natively. You could play every single Zen Studios game today by connecting a PC or your Steam Deck to this thing mm-hmm. and play the games. And, and you'll be able to participate in all the Zen leaderboards, Zen tournaments, and you'll have access to some features and functions you don't get access to with the At Games ecosystem. So it's going to be up to user preference. Uh, the, the the thing, again, I always have to reiterate this. I, I, I really think the Legends 4K machines are definitely for people who kind of don't want to buy a PC and mess around with VPX, Future Pinball. How do, I, how do I set up FX3? How do I set up Pinball M? How do I get my buttons mapped? How do I do this? Like, it's for people who want to play those games by just downloading them to the machine, right? So, I agree with that. You know, Completely. that's, that, that's but, but all I would add. But I would add that it's the, the real selling point is the ability to go that route if you oh, yeah. want to, as yeah. opposed to not. But, and, and it increases the resale value of yeah. it as well uh, if you did want to get rid of it. Because anybody can take that thing and mod that into a, a virtual uh, pinball and just put a PC in it uh, very yeah. easily, and it will, it will look incredible. So. And keep yeah, in mind, I, guys, we've been around for five years. Sorry, Rostalgia, this will be quick. We've okay. been around for five years, and a lot of us, we're familiar with CoinOps X. We're familiar with, uh, you know, hacking, emulation. We're familiar with uh, workarounds. We're familiar with setting up VPX, PCs, all that stuff. There's a lot of us who are familiar with it. But look at, like, Ray right here. There's a lot of Act Games customers who just want to turn on the machine and play. Because what made Arcade 1UP one of the leaders in this marketplace wasn't just the fact that they had some of the best titles. It was the fact that you just turned on their machines and boom, you're in a game within, <laughs> what, 30 seconds? No, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out how to use an arcade one up. That's how they, one reason they were so successful. Go ahead, Rostalgia. I was gonna say, I, I'm willing to bet you less than 30% of the user base is side loading or, or plugging in PCs. I think <clears throat> um, a, a large majority of people who are buying these machines want to buy them simply to turn them on and play the games that are either pre-installed or that are accessible through their um, their, their pinball. Less than sixty point three nine percent. Just a little bit. It's, it's a little bit less more than, than thirty. 60. Is this uh, another percentage that Rostalgia just picked off the wall? Eh, it's 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 an estimate. It's, I'm using the Rostalgia meter, and I think I'm pretty close. Yeah. So, um, but I, I really think that like this, especially the four K machine with their partnership with Zen, you're getting access to like some of the best pinball IP there is. So you get all of your favorites. You've got lots of the, even like the side stuff that people don't, that they like, but they wouldn't go out out of their way to, to make work. Like, I don't know, Walking Dead as an example is with the, the FX library or World, uh, what is it called? World World Cup Soccer. Like that's another massively popular IP that is going to potentially make its way to, to the machine. So it's, it's really... 
just like Carl said, it's really great that you can just turn it on and play, but all of Actium's products have given you the opportunity to plug in external devices, so you kind of get the best of both worlds. But Yeah, so so uh, when you say they got the, the best of IP, they have all the IP. Like, they've locked they got up everything. everybody. They've got everybody. They've got Zachariah. They've got Magic Pixel. Zachariah. Uh, they've got Zachariah. They've got, uh, you know, uh, Gottlieb. They've got uh, Farsight Studios. Zim right. the only thing left to get. I right. mean, really. What, what I was what I was trying to say was like when you compare it to like the the homebrew or the the VPX market, right? The the VPX market is developed by the community for the oh, community, yeah. and you can't you can't really compete with that. But from like a legal and licensing standpoint, they got everything that you could want. From a commercial standpoint, they've they've got everything secured. Everything is back. They've done in the pinball world what Arcade One Up did in the arcade. Yeah, Billy. Um, Billy says they don't have Stern. No one has Stern. You know who no has, one has Stern? Stern? Stern has Stern, and they're never going to have virtual tables. Yep. But the That's VPX true. versions of the Stern tables are some of the best that are uh, yeah. out there. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like the VPX version of like Ghostbusters and stuff, way better. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, and that's the thing. Like, you've got the ability to do your own work and, and make that happen on your machines, and the, the ecosystem yeah. is open for you to do that. But uh, yeah. I, I think the the real appeal here is that people can access and download whatever they want. Um, they can play it, and honestly, there's no better experience than just turning on a machine, selecting a game from the game list, and just launching it. So. Uh, I well, I I would argue a better experience would be not having to log in. <laughs> <laughs> Poor that would Carl. be a much better experience. Yep. Uh, let's see here. Tampa Tech gave us a ten dollars super chat, but I, I I must be missing something. Video game controller evolves into a muscled version of itself under the word level plus. What am I missing here, guys? What am I? Oh, it's a super sticker, P Dubs. Oh, it's a super sticker. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it doesn't show us the sticker. It just gives us the the, the code description yeah, of the. I can see it here. Right. Yeah. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Tampa Tech, uh, for that. Uh, greatly appreciate that. That was very nice of him. Uh, don't forget, Tampa Tech's got a whole new pinball machine coming out. We did an interview a couple weeks ago uh, where we talked about that. Uh, Rostalgia, what was the name of that pinball machine again? Because I wasn't there. Tilt Bob. Tilt Bob. That's and the name of the a, company. You're talking and about the company or the no, the, the machine itself was Road, called Road Trip. Trip. Road, Road Trip. Trip. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, my apologies. I wasn't there that episode. I was in um I was at that uh uh pinball convention, Zapcon. Uh but that looked that that sounded fun. I watched the replay and I thought that that was a very good show. I thought it was a very good show, guys. So uh, I, I'm I'm excited to see what they do. If they cuz yeah. cuz I think Tampa Tech was talking about how um there there yeah. the the playfield that they showed us was like revision 2, but there's actually a whole new version 3 with a bunch of other features and some cool tech that they're implementing. So I'm curious to see what happens there. Um yeah. What I thought was smart was when I watched the replay, they had mentioned in the replay that, and, and this is something interesting, guys, if you guys like real pinball, is the fact that uh, Tampa Tech uh, the, and Tilt Bob, they were talking about, not only are they going to release this as a real pinball machine for you to buy, but they are at the same time simul simul simultaneously release a virtual version that you could buy, download, and play. That's not what he said. Isn't that what he said? That's not what he said. That's it. That's what he wants to do. That's what yeah. they would like to do. But uh, I don't oh, think that's not one hundred percent confirmed. It's, it's it's not confirmed. Oh, yeah. I mean, Tampa Tech's here. He could let us know. But confirmed. yeah, thing. you're you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna go both ways, Tampa Tech, right? Because that's what we've heard about you all these years, right? You're going both ways on that on that release. <laughs> 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 uh, but I think that's actually pretty cool because some people they don't want to buy a real pinball machine they want to spend five ten bucks and just play a video game right so hopefully hopefully they do that because i caught that part of the stream and i thought that was a very cool idea i agree i think that they should yeah. release simultaneously digital and physical and just let people uh just get access to their game get their name out there any way they can and uh a ten dollar sell is a lot easier than a than a five to ten thousand dollar sell and as always, when it comes to At Games and the flipper delay on the Zen games, I'm very confident that At Games wants to fix it as soon as possible because I'm sure they want to 
tell everyone it's fixed and stop hearing people complain about it. We we want it to be fixed as much as that Games does, so hopefully that'll get ironed out. You would assume that if they solve that mathematical problem with one one game, they'll be able to solve it for almost all the rest. Uh, so hopefully that'll hopefully that'll happen. So. Yeah, what, whatever is going on with the flipper input is mm-hmm. an engine issue. It's not a it's not on a yeah. title by title basis. So. Just like you said, I'm sure when they fix it on one, it'll be fixed on everything. So Yeah, and then we could all move on with our lives, right? <laughs> We're all hung up on this. Everyone is just waiting. That's what's just, happening. We all just have to sit here and wait. Harping on it, right? We can't go to work. We can't make videos. We can't We can't enjoy <laughs> our time with our family until this is fixed. It's, uh, it's a problem here. Uh, Bob is on the fence. Well, you tell Bob. The Super Game Room dudes said make it so. And uh, hopefully we have the... Uh, the do we have any pull, Mike? Do we have any pull anymore? <clears throat> I don't know, man. I don't know. You people in the chat, you tell us. Do we have pull? We don't have any pull. <laughs> Michael B. We pulls. got a lot of push, but no pull. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> so a long time ago, several years ago, when I, when I was first getting to know Mike, uh, Mike had... Uh, uh, which well he sent a picture over of his family or we were talking on the phone about his family and no we were talking on facetime or something and his wife was all dressed up dolled up to go to work because she's she's a lawyer so she's all dressed up to go to court right and she's leaving the house mike and i are facetiming and mike's like p-dubs check it out isn't my wife beautiful no isn't that's not what happened gorgeous Th- that yeah that's what happened P- no you were just like wow, and then i said then i said and then i said i said how did you get that, Mike? And Michael and Mike tells me he goes Michael B pulls. He Michael pulls. B pulls, man. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> and I laughed for, for so long. And at that point, I knew Michael B and I would be friends for a very, very long time. <laughs> and we've had so many people try to prevent Mike and me from being friends, and we're still friends, all because Michael B pulls. <laughs> he pulls. I, same thing happened at my uh, same thing happened at my ten year uh, high school reunion. I was talking to a buddy outside. We were out having a dirt, and uh, he was like, "Your wife is beautiful." How'd that happen? And I was like, "I don't know what to tell you, man." Michael B. Bulls. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it was so funny. All right, anything else going on, or did we get to it all? We didn't talk about the physical pinball tables, so we got a little bit of news coming out of the Stern camp. They're doing a Black Knight sort of the, what's it called it? I sent it in the chat earlier. It was up on uh, Nap Arcade earlier. I saw it somewhere else as well, so let me just pull this up so I can give you a little bit more information. So it's Black Knight yeah, you pull uh, it up, Sword of Rage. Michael B. P- Michael B. Pulls. You pull Michael it up. B. Pulls. Black Knight Sword of Rage. Uh, so... Uh, Justin and uh, B, when they were at Comic-Con earlier this year, they got to talk to the Stern guys, and they found out from the Stern guys there was going to be a lot of re-releases. Of course, we've already seen a Star Trek, re- uh, Star Wars re-release. We've seen a Stranger Things re-release. Looks like they're getting ready for a run of Black Knight uh, Sword, Sword of Rage Pro model um, basically uh. coming out again this year. So if this is one you missed out on you're interested in, you can pick up... Yeah. Soon, uh, thanks to a notice from Tilt Amusements, Black Knight, Sword of Rage. I don't know anything about this title. Is this like an old, old title that's being remade, or is this something uh, that's been released in the last? I, I'm not. I, I'm. I'm kind of fuzzy on Black Knight. My uh, pinball uh, expertise obviously is not that hall. I know there was a they, there was a Black Knight originally. That's an old like uh, old table. Then yeah. there was like a Black Knight. Um, was there a Black Knight 2000 or something like that? And then there was this? They've, I don't done, know. Bla- no They've done Black Knight several times over. It's been yeah. done several times over. And there's 7,000 of them that they're manufacturing? No, 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 no. Uh, it's $7,000 shipped to your door. $7,000? No, no, no. Scroll up. Scroll scroll up a second. Uh, this limited, is a very small, small run. one-time run, 7,000 shipped to your door. Oh, I got it. Okay. This is very, one time, 7,000 shipped to your door. Okay. I was going to say 7,000 units is not a small run. So is 7,000 7, mm-hmm. good price? What do you guys think? No. <laughs> For a pro? That's, no. That's the, that's, isn't that the same price that all their pros are? Aren't no, all their pros like no, 6997? No. no. Yeah. Uh, their pros are... Are their pros 699 
six. Yeah, I'm pretty sure all their their pros are seven grand. And then they're oh uh, yeah, that's right. They went are like eleven or something like that. No, you're thinking of Canadian prices. No, I'm not. I'm definitely it's, not. It's nine. It's eight nine 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 for the premium. Uh, oh, it might be more now, actually. I think I'm pretty sure it's ten grand, man. Not U.S. No, for premium. I think, no, I think it's nine so, nine. No, yeah, nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine no, for the not. premiums. No, it's not. So Black Knight. While well, Mike's pulling that up, Black Knight was released by Williams in 1980. They did it a limited edition in 1981. Then they, in 1989, they released Black Knight 2000. Yeah. And then in 2019, Stern got their hands on it, and they did Black Knight Sword of Rage Pro Premium and Limited Edition models in 2019. So this table's gone over several transformations over the last uh, 40 yeah. years. Yeah, so um, it's $5,999 usually for a pro U.S. Oh. Where are you getting that price, man? Nitro Pinball. <laughs> and... Uh, the voice. I'm just going straight pinball. to Stern's website, man. What are you talking about? My you don't know what you're shoot. talking about. I, mean, I don't know what to tell you here. Go go to Stern's website. They, like, Here's the Black example, Knight you... Sword of Rage. Uh, it's going no, it's going to be five thousand nine hundred ninety nine total cost. Yes, yeah, six thousand nine hundred ninety nine total. And let me go back. So seven thousand, Mike. <laughs> seven thousand for that one. That one specifically. Huh, uh, Mike, I wonder, I wonder who said 7,000. He's baiting you, Mike. You're falling into the trap, Mike. Uh, $1,000 U.S. deposit. Yeah, it is 7,000. You're right about that huh, one. Huh, interesting. All right, let's do a premium then, dickhead, that you said yeah, was $10,000. I'm, I'm curious to know if the premium is like 10,000 too. I'm curious, Mike. Why don't you Why don't you educate me a little bit? Nine thousand four hundred ninety nine dollars. Oh, my bad. Oh. I'm sorry that I was five hundred dollars. You know it was previously pinballs. eight thousand nine hundred ninety nine. Where does it say that? But bust all the popcorn. In, that's how much the price was because I bought one. I didn't have one <laughs> sent to me that I could get a team in to look at and not exchange any cash. Mike, Mike, if the price was that two years ago, it's irrelevant because today the price is about ten grand. It's not ten grand. It's five hundred dollars off. What kind of math is this? This is like people like oh nine thousand four hundred ninety nine dollars. Ten grand. <laughs> Mike, ninety five hundred bucks is close enough to ten grand when you have to factor in shipping and taxes, bro. Here it comes. You're adding extra things to get there. No, shipping I'm... and taxes. Car you Carl, can, you what got if the we're in an area where you can go pick it up? Okay, <laughs> Mike, go you're look the at top a of the table. penis. Go, you are go, go a bell a end. Machine. Go look at a different machine. This is great, Carl. Where's my snacks? Jesus Christ, dude. I was like, oh, they're about seven grand and about yeah. 10000 for the premium. You're Trust like, no, me. No, they're not. We had the same type of argument, but the roles were reversed when Rostalgia was telling us that the pro and premium Venom, there was no difference. They're the same game. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, look at Mike. He's going to explode. Mike's going to explode. They are not the same thing. They're identical. What are you talking about? There's literally no difference. And they're both I, what I heard, grand. Mike. I'm pretty much an expert at this point. So yeah. the only difference is you get a couple extra like pinballs, like the silver balls. They throw a couple <laughs> extra at the manual. That's the only difference. Just in case you lose one. Nostalgia. Don't argue yeah. with Mike. Mike pulls. Mike B. Mike B pulls. He pulls on he that. Does, uh, he, does, he pulls on that plunger, wrong. doesn't he? He's wrong. Ridiculous. Look at Deadly. You're the Stick top of a penis. You're the belly. You're, a, you're the mushroom tip. <laughs> You're the mushroom tip. Oh, our live chat's so naughty. You guys are always so naughty. Holy shit, we've been going for an hour and 45 minutes. Anything else we got to talk about? We should probably talk about the price of Stern Pinball Machines and what the price <laughs> of like a pro is versus a premium. Uh, oh, man, so it's here funny. we go. Uh, well, one of the reasons we did want to talk about Stern Pinball, Venom, back on March 28th, did get an update. It's now at that official 1.0 code, so game is complete not really they'll keep going but this is the official 1.0 code so you can now go play it one of our hosts actually purchased the uh, venom pinball machine as soon as it was announced he pre-ordered it another one of our house uh, another one of our hosts was lucky enough to develop a relationship with stern that they trust him sent him out a machine for him to do a review on it and that review is coming out uh when is it coming out Ristalja? uh any day now any day now. Any day now. Days. 
I've seen some clips. It looks like it's it's really, really well shot. I know it's going to be well edited. Uh, both those things are going to be done well because Rostalgia paid somebody else to do it. I don't know about the voiceover. <laughs> All my editing, what are you talking about? <laughs> don't know about the voiceover. But anyways, the yeah, voiceover Nostalgia's is going to be a great the worst video coming sure. out. So, uh, guys, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about Venom Pinball? Uh, P W, you talk about your experience owning it, uh, what you think of it with the updated code, and Nostalgia, your short experience. I- I'd love to chime in, but you know, my experience playing why, Venom is very why limited. Why should I? Why should I tell the viewers about it when tomorrow I have a video going live that shares? The experiences. You have a video going live right around the same time that Nostalgia's releasing is. You competitive so, fuck. I am. <laughs> what is wrong with you? That's I okay. am. That's and okay. I figured what could really help make this video a success but to have it poorly edited with no production team, <laughs> a terrible thumbnail that I well, made your in Your thumbnail is going to be better than Nostalgia's. At least the my, text my, that my, it will my, be. My, my thumbnail was made in Microsoft Paint. And we only used one camera that only had half a battery during filming. (laughs) Guys, it's going to be a shit show. You definitely want to check out my video about the Venom pinball machine and not Rostalgia's. That's that's fair. That's fair. My video is going to be very different. I'm not I'm not doing a review in the typical sense of like, I don't. I don't know pinball all that much. I don't know. Wait, that guy. was clear when you said the pro and premium were the same. <laughs> they're yeah. they are the exact same, Mike. Yeah. Literally. They're also the same price. You know too. what? And 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 when they when Stern sees Rostalgia's thumbnail, they're gonna say, Never mind, give us our machine. <laughs> We've back. made some big mistakes. Do you see that <laughs> ugly font he used? What is with that second stroke? Like it's terrible. <laughs> it's too thick. It's, it's so too thick. thick. It is. You're too your thick. Fungus. What am I supposed to do about that, guys? <laughs> you, I can't literally help anything. You could have just sent it to me. I would have fixed the text for you. <laughs> the, the, I, the I have girth. so guys. Like, the girth on Rostalgia's font. <laughs> too much. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of thumbnails. girth, speaking of girth, Detroit love. Send them on their way, man. You guys have a great weekend. We got to get out of here. Um, I did not want to go without introducing, uh, talking about this. Oh, topic. shit. I oh, forgot yeah, about that's this. probably an important Hold one. on. Stop the presses. We're not going anywhere. Take a look at uh, this. What are we looking at? Oh, uh, it's beauty. Beauty. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, this the, the pre-sales went all a year ago, but now it's available for people to buy that didn't pre-order it. And so uh, I'm going to start off. What up, no? Peep the Berserk X Replicate, a dope one six scale replica of the OG Berserk arcade machine from the 80s. This bad boy is a faithful reproduction of the classic cabinet with all the sick details and accessories. You can play both Berserk and Frenzy on this sucker. And let me tell you, gaming the gaming experience is lit. Designed by New Wave Toys and officially licensed by Atari, the Berserk X Replicate has a rechargeable battery, premium LC uh, color screen, high-res cabinet art, a removable full PCB prop, and don't sleep on this, guys. This is a, a collector's item that you want to get your hands on for just under two Benjamins. Nice just job. Just under two Benjamins. Nice so job. So P-Dubs, P-Dubs had one of these and gave it away because he didn't I think still it was have very it. good. Oh, I ha- still I have it. I haven't given it away yet. I filmed my review. I just didn't have time to actually sit down and edit it and turn it into a watchable video and publish it. But I got to tell you something, though, man. It's not entirely my fault. Amazon released Fallout on Amazon Prime. Oh, yeah. Guys, all my free time this week, all the the eight hours I get to mess around on YouTube, guess what? I watched all eight episodes of Fallout. I, I binge watched that, and I loved it. Just a heads up there. Go the, watch the, Fallout on Amazon Prime. So uh, I think all four of us got review copies of this from New Wave Toys. They were I, I wish they would have sent me. I hate to sound like a spoiled bitch, but I wish they I we got Frenzy. Oh man, look at that spoiled bitch and wanting the special frenzy, treatment again. That, fr- that frenzy was so cool looking though. All all it was distress survivor series. Do you do you hear how uh, entitled P Dub sounds right now? I he just always wish we had sounds entitled. Frenzy. Do you know oh, that so when much. when a company sends me Would've something so and doesn't cool. send him something, he calls me and goes, Why'd they send it to you and not me? And I'm like, I don't That's know. That's not true, Mike. Don't <laughs> make shit up. That don't make shit up, Mike. Oh, my God. That is lies. But 
Um, they so they sent Berserk out. Everyone's been publishing reviews about Berserk uh, all this week. It, it's you know there's tons of them out there already. So, uh, but there you go, uh, Carl. What are your thoughts on it? Oh, I love it. I love it. It's it's, it's a nice cabinet. The o- the only thing I think they missed they missed the opportunity uh, that with the uh, full um, PCB. I wish I wish when you pulled it out, it would turn the, the machine off. Then when you put it back in, it would turn the machine on. That would have been sick. oh, like a little like uh, a little s- switch in there. Okay. Yeah, a little switch in that would have been epic. Yeah. Uh, but but that's that's the only thing that, you know I, I think was a miss. But that, uh, otherwise, this thing is an awesome also reproduction of that cabinet i did put the uh kick plate on mine um yeah. uh i didn't put the atari stickers on it yet but uh it's a they did a really good job oh I, I didn't notice that with the marquee after uh, does it does it say uh atari on it uh, no they left no. it off and they gave you the atari sticker oh. to put on if you want so when i saw the uh prototype it had an atari logo done but it was done in the old stern font which i thought was a nice compromise and they may have yeah yeah that's what that's the sticker that they gave us Atari oh, cool. with the with the so the screen in front. I, i'm really excited Ristalgia, do you have yours yet i do i just got mine yesterday or the day before well, yeah, I think, either yesterday or the day before i think mine will be here tuesday so i'm trying to uh free up my uh time slot so i can get uh my review up pretty quick so I, i'm excited about this one um you know it's a it's a cool game uh like Pete up said it's before my time in the arcade, but I have nostalgia for it because of that weird, uh, you know, chasing ghosts movie and the two guys fighting over the berserk scores. So I'm excited. And plus, uh, P Dubs, I think same as you. Um, Atari actually sent us berserk recharge, and I actually fell in love with that as well. So that's another reason I'm excited for this cab. And, yeah, and it wouldn't be a Robotron if it wasn't a berserk. So um, yeah. they yeah. definitely inspired the game like that. So yeah. I know you're a big fan of that. Yeah. I, I like right, guys. Well, wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. Okay, no, no, no. Sure. We got a lot more to talk we, about. We, a lot no. more. I thought we were wrapping up. We're in three no, hours. No, no. Okay. no this will only take about three minutes. I got to say something, and I definitely want to get your guy. I know you guys are tired. Trust me, guys. I just need your feedback one more time. But I, something happened this week that that, that blew my mind is uh, Numbskull, since uh, Carl reminded me about New Wave Toys, Numbskull put Amazon put up on Amazon Space Invaders 1, Space Invaders 2, Ninja Turtles, Ninja Turtles in Time on Amazon. Normal, full price, 300 bucks. What shocked the holy hell out of me is that the Ninja Turtle cabinets sold out, both of them. Yep. Same That's day. the second time. Second time same, in a row. Same day within hours. And we're not talking, they only had like 10. Like, it, apparently there was a, a sizable orders placed, right? So... Big shout out to Numbskull. I, I, I didn't think three hundred dollars is a lot of money for those, but they sold out right away. But just in case, guys, if you need your Space Invaders, there's plenty of left, man. Well, there's like eleven left with more stock on the way. Now, what was funny is right after they sold out, um, the guys over there, Ben and and Chris, uh, they went on their Quarter Arcades Facebook group, and they said, "Hey guys, just so you know, all the Ninja Turtle caps sold out." Amazon placed another order to get more in, so they're going to make more and, and send them in. And Amazon, Amazon will eventually have them. But th- is that surprising, guys? Like three hundred no. bucks for these? Holy not shit. not even a little so. bit. You don't think so? No, 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 and especially for turtles, that that is such yeah. mass appeal for so many people. That's like so? a perfect gift item. That's like if you're a turtles fan, you would buy it. Mm-hmm. If you're a grandparent of a grandchild that's really into like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, there's so many people and who would buy that. You would love this thing here. So, so, so let me get this straight. Let me get this straight. One company releases a quarter size desk arcade of turtles for three hundred dollars. Everybody's totally fine with it. Another company releases something that's three times the size of that that you can actually sit at and play like almost like a mini toy arcade, mm-hmm. but it, it works that way. For like yeah. five hundred or six hundred dollars, and people are like, "Bullshit! They're they're ripping us yep. off." <laughs> yeah, yep. but that's because one of them is good quality and the other one's bad. Uh, boom, <laughs> boom! All right, guys, that's no, 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 no. Come on, yet. dude, we really got to go. Fallout, incredible, but one last thing. We got to talk about oh, Mike being on X Men ninety seven this week. Oh no, yeah. no, 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 no! We can't talk about that. That's a spoiler X- alert. X-Men let's 97. do it. Let's do that oh. next week. Give people time to watch it. 
this week's X-Men 97, we'll be talking about next week's X-Men 97. It was Wednesday. I can't help it that Rostalgia is a, you know, I haven't even seen the first episode. You have to wait until Greatest episode ever. Oh, incredible. Ever. Incredible. X-Men 97. I don't Make sure you guys this. go watch it. Is Gambit. It so, Remember it. It. <laughs> it was so well done. Mike, just so All you right. know, before we go, Mike, just so you know, if you hop onto the uh, the Stern Store website, no oh, shit, here we go. <laughs> you can uh, take a look for yourself. the uh, The pros are about seven thousand dollars. The premiums are uh, about ten thousand dollars. Just so you know, um, they're not ten thousand dollars. You're right, ninety seven dollars. No, they're nine thousand four hundred ninety nine dollars. Mike, 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 follow instruction. Go to the Stern website. Put your big boy pants on. No, uh, here we go again, boys. Nostalgia these... knows every. <laughs> but they have as, as we wait for Mike to click away to get to Stern yeah. Store website. Okay, we're gonna go to shop.sternpinball.com. Uh, let's see here. Oh, no. She lion uh, no. gaming. Uh, Two dollars super chat. You guys don't score 16,660 on berserk death you guys don't i wonder if there's a typo in there jade is there a typo in there you guys don't score 6060 on berserk death. Score six, um. mike i can just here i'll help you out here ready i see it i see it Giles. no no no, no, no. let's 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 make sure nine. everyone sees it yeah. i just want to make sure that everyone sees this and make sure you okay. guys go go check out Jade's review of Berserk. She actually did something different and unique compared to other reviews out there. I'm not going to spoil it, but it's definitely worth a watch all the way through to the end. Go ahead. So, so, so Mike, I'm not sure what that price is. It's clearly not $7,000. I was obviously wrong. I need to apologize. It's not $7,000 for No, you were pro. right about $7,000 No, 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 it's not. That's not true. That's not $7,000. That's less than $7,000. You're right. There's a difference between off pricing, which is, you know, 0.99 and stuff like that, compared to $500 and you're like, it's the same thing as 10000 Mike, Mike, can, math. Can you, can you math? Uh, I don't I, think, I can math. I don't know if you can math. I don't, I don't know anyone in the world who sees a price tag of $9,700 and would argue, oh, it's not ten grand. 9400 y- Yes, a lot of people like that. That's people who see like $1,299 for... Uh, you know, that bucks. game's Legends Ultimate, and then they're like, $1,500? Where are you getting that fucking math, idiot? <laughs> Mike, the difference on a $1,000 product versus a $10,000 product is the percentage. There's a greater margin there on, on a cheaper pr- a product. So a $200 difference on a $1,500 price point is very different than a $200 difference on a $10,000 $500 price point. Five hundred dollar. How about, how about, go back. We, how about Mike? we talk about it offline? No, no, no. We no, got to no, talk no. about this on. We, we got to settle this on air. It has to be settled. My wife is waiting for me, man. She's downstairs waiting for me. Hold on. Well, Mike. Well, I mean, uh, I got tonight. Does, tonight's does, tonight. I get to they, pay uh, the rent, man. I get to pay the rent tonight. He does before they. Uh, they before they raised the pinball no. prices since last I looked. Another two hundred dollars for nostalgia. Now, Mike. Mike. I'm sorry, but ninety seven hundred. Is pretty well ten grand. That's the new price, which you were only now learning about I'm because ready, you Carl. only got just, interest in it. Just do it, Carl. My AP, AP Dubs was uh, Lieutenant. You're on the uh, on that Fallout show. I I, don't, I if she was she she got yeah. old like really yeah she's old, old. she's old she, <laughs> she's, she's really on that old. check check out I the so. episode one she's on there from Star Trek. Yep. yep. Uh, ten thousand. Oh my God! They're still arguing, and we muted their mics. <laughs> Can we go now, Mike? <laughs> Guys, if Nostalgia's right, give us a one. If Michael B's right, give us a two. Let's just let the viewers time, win in doubt. Let the viewers on the way. settle it. Hold we on, Carl. We could, yeah. One, one, uh-huh. one for Nostalgia, two for Mike. One for Nostalgia, two for Mike. Who's right? Let us know. Oh, the for first Mike. one comes in as Mike. Okay, I see a but couple. There's a lot ones. of Nostalgia's coming in. I see ones. Oh, no, it's still about 50-50. Still about 50-50. Oh, here are more ones. Tampa Tech voted three. Three's a good number. <laughs> All right. That's that's good stuff, guys. All right, let's get Kyle back in here. Looks like Rostalgia wins the popular vote. Come on, let, let Carl back on the show. Carl, send them on their way. We're ready, baby. Uh, I don't believe it. I don't believe we're ready. We're ready. 
We're waiting just, on just, you. Now, now we're just waiting on an apology, actually. We're just waiting on an apology. You can go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and Rostalgia, I think you should give me 9,546 apologies. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Carl. <laughs> Do it. In five, four, three, two, one. Guys, thanks for watching. We appreciate you as always. And until next time, we'll see you on the web. <laughs>